I came across a poem recently that I used as the benediction at the recent service in the church and our Celtic service. And um, I, I got numerous responses about people wanting to use it in their own personal devotions. And, and so I wanted to rehearse it with you. Listen without interrupting, share without pretending, speak without accusing, enjoy without complaining, give without sparing, trust without wavering, pray without ceasing, forgive without punishing, answer without arguing, promise without forgetting. I, I was so moved by this when I first read it, and so I wanted to share it with everyone and it strikes me so much as the simplicity is our calling as followers of Jesus that to listen without interrupting, just, just listen. There's no need to respond in haste or even offer a reply. So much of the times, all we need to do is hear what someone is saying so they know that they are being heard. There's no need to interrupt. Share without pretending. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Share without pretending. The first thing that comes to my mind when I reflect on that is to be vulnerable in such a way that's genuine, not because someone needs me to be vulnerable and, and so I try to make something up to connect with them, but to be genuinely vulnerable <laughs> In, in such a way that elicits generosity, kindness, and vulnerability from the other person. Speak without accusing. Yeah, um, I take that one to heart uh, most days to say things that do not even sound accusatory in any way. I, one of the things I'm learning to do these days is to never begin a question with the word why, because why is, is the beginning of a statement more than it is a question. And I wonder that little slight twist, beginning our questions with what or when or where and how that might transform our speech. Enjoy without complaining. Um, this is something I think I've gotten a lot better at over the years. And there's also that temptation that when I'm enjoying something, to consider how it might be better and, and how that want or need for it to be better actually keeps me from enjoying what is. Trust without wavering. That's a hard one, I think, in our culture, uh, in our culture of distrust, to trust and extend trust, knowing that it will be okay, that I don't need to waver in my trust because even if trust is broken, it will all be okay because ultimately my trust is in God. Pray without ceasing, well, we've heard that one in scripture from St. Paul, and, and I think that's a constant need for us as followers of Jesus so that our prayer is, as the earliest Christians remind, is as normal as breathing in and breathing out. Forgive without punishing. Yeah, <laughs> again, sometimes we can forgive and still hold whatever it is over another person. We punish them with our grief. We punish them with our hurt. We punish them in ways that actually do not allow them to grow out of the harm they have done to us. And so our forgiveness, if it is true forgiveness, need not punish. Answer without arguing. As someone who's been trained well by the academy to argue, um, I find that one probably the most challenging. 
because I love a good argument. But if I can simply answer, respond in such a way that is playful, in such a way that is dialogical and in the sense of we're creating something together, not I'm simply trying to make sure you know the right way, then I can respond, I can answer without being argumentative. Promise without forgetting. Our promises um, are things that I think we often make in haste. And when we make our promises in haste, we often forget making them. And so to promise without forgetting, I think first means that we actually know what we're saying. And we pause and are patient enough to, to commit ourselves to what we know we want or need to commit ourselves to so that we can follow through, so that we can remember and not forget what we have given ourselves to. This poem, I think, captures so much of what we as followers of Jesus are called to do, what we are called to embody, this way of love. And I think if we can do all these things in really small ways, maybe even just taking one at a time. It might be hard to take all of these at once, but just try maybe listening without interrupting and see how that goes. And then maybe moving on to the next by sharing without pretending and then moving down the line. I think if we can learn to embody these in the simplicity of our life, we can really inhabit this world with grace trusting completely in the way of love, knowing that God holds us all in wholeness for God's sake, that we might benefit and become the people God has called us to be. Amen.